The Defi Azimut speed runs in Lorient were breathtaking. The Amoka boats put on a show, reaching speeds of up to 30 knots. These spectacular speed runs were in conjunction with the 48-hour two-handed race along the coast of France starting in Lorient. You can see our Defi coverage of the start and finish on our World on Water YouTube channel. It's fantastic. This is your weekly sailing highlights show, The Global World on Water, September 29, 2023. Alex Thompson yesterday was at the Lorient La Base during the Defi Azimut. He was asked what he thought of the Amoka class today, and his answer was phenomenal. Alex is working with the El Occitane sailing team. The Defi race, which combines tactical decision making, navigational prowess, and physical endurance, will undoubtedly test the team of Clarice Kramer and Alan Roberts' skills. With this being Clarice's first race with her newly launched team, and having such a strong co-skipper sets the duo up for a strong start to their season. Well, we're here in L'Oréal, and we're standing on L'Occitane en Provence, and we're here for the Defi Azimuth. When you say 35 boats in this race, it makes me smile because, you know, it shows just how quickly and how big Emoka has come. You know, the heart of ocean racing is, is in Emoka. So that's something I'm very proud of. And it's going to be the first opportunity for these new boats to be able to perform against each other. You know, there's always races within the races and, you know, I'm always looking back to see what the Daggerball boats are doing. And it's become a, the stepping stones. People start at the bottom and they work their way up. It makes it very interesting as a sailor and as a technician, you know, to think of the new ideas, the new ways to make progress. Ultimately, the, the progress is, is just incredible. Where we've come in 20 years is just phenomenal. We are sailing only media. Please subscribe, share, like, and check the alerts bell. After only 45 races at five regattas, the two rival leading crews finished on the same 198 points aggregate. But as Platoon beat Preveza in this final event, fourth to their eighth, Han Mullespria finally adds the 2023 season championship to the Rolex TP52 World Championship that Platoon won last month by a single point over Preveza. It's a top-level series and these results prove the close competition in the world. Well, the time has come. The big Saturday showdown on the Bay of Palma, racing out of Puerto Portales. It's always a great honour to have the 52 Super Series here in Puerto Portales because we love this class. A lead of three points for Platoon going onto the water ahead of Prevetsa. Prevetsa are the long-time series leaders and there's a 30-point gap back to third. So there's every chance that these two boats will fight it out on their own. And the fifth and final regatta title of the season's up for grabs, but Phoenix go on the water with a five-point lead. 
Well, it's a light shifty cross off to a breeze for the first race, five to nine knots. A very even start, quite busy at the committee boat end of the line. Prevetsa and Platoon are side by side. They split in the upper part of the top beat. Phoenix get round and doing best, lead round the top mark. Platoon are down in seventh and Prevetsa are in ninth. Platoon jibe off and it's still even swinging back and forwards through the race. But Phoenix goes through the finish line comfortably winning the race and taking the regatta title. Winning this regatta is huge. I think we had every condition there was all in one regatta and we just managed that well and managed our position with against the other boats. And at the end of what proves to be the last race of the season, Prevets a lead platoon through the finish line, but with two boats between them, the circuit title goes to the German world champions, but only on tie break. I tried it so many times and finally we had a little bit of luck here and I'm so sorry for all the bad luck of Provetsa. They're the real champions this year. Very disappointed in some way. We feel that uh, we've been the best boat of the season. So that's a good feeling. So after five regattas, 45 races, Platoon win on 198 points, only on tiebreak against Provetsa, who are also on 198 points. Quantum Racing take third on 224, and Gladiator fourth on 228. And so the final standings for the Puerto Portals 52 Super Series Sailing Week. Phoenix winning on 29 points, second or sled on 40, and Allegra third on 41. And at the end of a five regatta season, which started back in May in Saint Tropez, what a finale, what an emotional roller coaster all the way through, and finishing locked on points, it couldn't have been closer. In only their first season of Club Swan Racing, Eduardo de Souza Ramos, Onda, Brazil, had gone into the deciding final day at the top of the leaderboard, after posting two race wins and two other podium finishes, earlier in the regatta, only to be overhauled by Fastar, Italy, with a 1-2-3 scoreline in the last three races. Last season we, we did many second places, we were always in the fight for the win, and then at the end the win doesn't come, and so definitely the win is here and we are happy. For me most important is the spirit of the team, not just on board, but also when we are home. So combination was perfect this week, I mean sailing is all about this, I mean on the driving sailing, when you combine everything together in the same week, even if you are not very trained, you can, uh, you can achieve the, the winning moment. But to be honest, it's probably one of the best boats in the world to own the driver. And this combination we just found it in a good way this week and we won. It's beautiful feeling. Thanks to the boys, thanks to Lorenzo for running this program. We are very happy. After starting with 112 riders from 28 nations at the start of the six-day regatta, the final day of competition at a Formula Kite event is all about the top 10. Ellie Aldridge and Ricardo Pianosi have won the first major senior titles of their Olympic careers at the 2023 Formula Kite European Championships in Portsmouth, England. We have our Formula Kite European Champions, 
Ellie Aldrich, she was leading the first race of the final. She only needed to win that race. She was 100 metres from the finish, but then she didn't quite manage to keep her kite filling through the final jibe. It fluttered to the water. Annelus Lammets from the Netherlands swept past, took that race win. Ellie Aldridge managed to find the composure to win the next race. Well, she led more or less from the start. This time, whatever was going through the back of her mind, she got through that final jibe. She crossed the finish and she becomes women's European champion for the first time in her career. Meanwhile, in the men, Ricardo Pianosi, well, all he needed to do was win one race, but Maxime Noche from France, he wins the first one. Pianosi, can he do it in the second? Pianosi eventually does come through, and so the 18-year-old Italian has won his first European title. It was big waves, big wind for the final day. We've seen absolutely everything here on Eastney Beach, and we've got two more countries qualified for the Olympic Games. Yanis Maus from Germany, he's qualified his country for next year at Paris 2024. Gisela Polito, she has qualified Spain for 2024. So we've had all kinds of action. We now move on to Kite Foiling World Series Austria in Trounsey in just over a week's time. So join us then. It's an incredible feeling. The, this week was amazing. Uh, I do, I give everything I have every day and at the end there is the result to pay all the sacrifice. Yeah, I'm very, very happy about that. It was very hard, the level is uh, incredible high in this regatta and, and yeah, that's hard. Yeah, for, for me it's a very good result for my, for my campaign for the Olympic and, uh, and I think uh, it's uh, a big block of my of my future um, qualifying for the Olympics. Yeah, I put a big block. Yeah. Do you know what? This is actually pretty up there. I was saying to the girls earlier. I've never actually won an event outright. I've won events where we've been in a mixed fleet with the guys as well, but I've never actually won in the final, like the final final. So I'm really happy to be able to pull it pull it off. And you just keep on getting better and better. You're closing the gap and uh, you've turned a lot of thirds into a lot of seconds this year. And, and finally, you've, you've got a major championship victory. And it, it must feel like things are going in the right direction for you. I think so. Hopefully it's, we'll keep going up next year. I think our squad is really unique and we're actually really special. We have quite a lot of respect for each other and we get on really well and we're kind of... We're kind of like, well, if we all push each other, then we'll all get better. And then whoever the person is that goes to the Olympics will hopefully then go win a gold medal for all of us. Um, but you know that you're, I don't know, you, we're just helping each other, you know? Like we always, we don't think of it in a, a selfish way. We try and think of it as in a, a team way. Yeah. Extra special. Yeah, it's so cool to see how many people have come down to watch. Um, heaps of, yeah, friends and family and just local people from down here. Hopefully it will inspire more people to get out on the water as well. Yeah, it's, it's big. I don't know if my grandma's watching, but hi. <laughs> the Annapolis Yacht Club's 3, 2, 1 Invitational Challenge last week was sponsored by Upward Dog Services, who create you a more balanced dog. Seven prestigious clubs were competing this year from around the U.S., including the New York Yacht Club, Newport Harbor Yacht Club, St. Francis San Francisco Yacht Club, Ida Lewis Yacht Club, San Diego Yacht Club, and Texas Corinthian Yacht Club. Around 2017, something started brewing in Annapolis, a new approach to facing off in the sport of sailing. Team and match racing both existed around the country, but because of John Howell and Cole Alsop with the support of the Annapolis Yacht Club, the disciplines of 3v3, 2v2, and 1v1 were about to meet in one single event. With a lot of race committee, umpire, and surrounding team and match racing community presence, the 3 2 1 Invitational Regatta changed how yacht clubs met on a patch of water forever. Local clubs helped sort out the choreography, and by 2019, yacht clubs from around the country joined the party. For 2023, eight teams we sent 16 members to the mouth of the Severn River. Each sailor needed to be skilled in multiple ways, 
combing, trimming, bow, mask, pit, the 321 doesn't reward specialization. It rewards the team that can adapt, recover, push, and persist in what turned out to be, on average, a big air weekend. Two people on three J22s for 3v3 no kites, three people on two J22s for 2v2 with kites, and all six on J105s with kites, of course, weather permitting. Bell Hughes Cardi and Derek Lynch co-chairing the event. The swarm of bosuns, change boats, mark boats, and an expertly crafted rotation sheet kept the action running smooth on the water while the staff of the Annapolis Yacht Club hosted dinners and parties on land. So I think it's uh, an amazing regatta. The amount of action and sailing that happens is like nothing else I've ever really done. Uh, you know, 15, 20 minute races, 10, 12 races a day, different discipline every race. I really enjoy the aspect of six people have to do so many different things to be successful. It's, the organization and the yacht club, they put effort put it as the top of the bar. I think in the camaraderie that's built with the teams and the clubs and you know these people for a lot of years. And it gives a chance for me to meet some of the younger up and coming sailors that I don't know. So it's been a great time for me. I've really enjoyed myself. Sponsors were celebrated and Regatta Karate calibrated for the final day of the event. As Ophelia passed through the Atlantic, a behemoth number of flights were sent off to get through as much of the single round robin as possible. It takes 28 flights to have every team meet every other team in every discipline. And with the four o'clock time cutoff approaching, the San Diego Yacht Club, St. Francis and Annapolis Yacht Clubs were still in the hunt for top honors. One final flight in light air was the decider. St. Francis and Annapolis had 13 wins, and San Diego had 12 after a strong run late in the game. St. Francis and San Diego were slated for one final 2v2 team race, and Annapolis was on a bye, therefore looking on from a sponsor boat. A passing rainstorm sucked the breeze to the right harder than any other shower, to the point where each leg of the box was a different point of sail than what is usual. In 2v2, the team whose boat finishes in fourth loses. San Diego switched to light air mode the fastest and finessed their two boats into a 1-2 and with the parade-like leg 3, 4, and 5 snatched up their 13th win. A three-way tiebreak meant St. Francis would end up in third place. San Diego Yacht Club, the dark horse, pulled off second place with AJ Ryder as team captain. And for the second time, the Annapolis Yacht Club was triumphant. Seth Minninger, AJ Libby, Brad Julian, Fletcher Sims, led by co-captains Lilla Salveson and Brady Stack. We send out an email and see who's interested, and then we bug people. But, uh, <laughs> a lot of emails. No, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a great team effort. There's too many volunteers to possibly name, but uh, Don Santa and Kevin Fitzgerald, the owner of the 105s, a really big thank you to those guys. I, I mean, there must have been 50 volunteers plus working on this thing, so it was a huge effort. So th thank so you to the competitors being, uh, for coming and <laughs> great sailing. The event's so unique because you're just jumping from boat to boat to boat and you have to constantly be changing gears. You're going from asymmetricals to symmetricals. You're re-rigging the kites when you jump in. Like there's a couple kites we had underneath the keel when we jumped in. So it's just working together as a team every single time, even though you're sailing with different people in every single race. Congratulations to all eight teams. Competing in an event that is this physically and mentally challenging in an average of 15 knots plus is no small feat. For T2P TV, this is Ashley Love. For the Planet by Sam Goodchild and Thomas Ruyant, with Pierre Bouraz as media man, took third place in the Azimut Laurient Agglomeration 2023 Challenge. The three men covered 587.1 miles on the Great Circle in one day, 20 hours, 02 minutes, and 30 seconds, at an average speed of 13.3 knots. They covered 676.7 miles on the bottom, at an average of 15.4 knots. They finished 2 hours and 15 minutes behind the winner Chiral, 
and 27 minutes behind second place Massif. Là, c'est un peu le calme avant la tempête quand même. Je pense que pile poil au moment du départ, il y a le petit front qui va passer, ça va monter d'un coup. Avec la pluie qui va avec. Le vent a fait chier, donc il euh, y a des grains un peu partout. Là, on essaye de, euh, ouais, de trouver le bon, euh, le bon endroit pour euh, se mettre sur la ligne. Bon, de Passage de la dernière marque. Ah bah, je suis un petit peu tard, mais pas mal. C'est bien refait, on va croiser le contact avec Charles. parler pour, euh, pour se trouver et se comprendre et ça c'était bien sympa là tu me déconcentres là c'est pas fini c'est pas fini la course avec Thomas, c'est la première fois qu'on a navigué ensemble et c'était top, on a, je pense qu'on a bien travaillé ensemble, c'était agréable, euh, tout ce qu'on veut dans un régate et on a fait une, un bon petit perf aussi, troisième, on est pas content avec ça. 